Hey, Jeff. Hey, hey Steve. Jeff Zilg at USA Today. Maybe not specific to this series, but overall, teams have always tried to create mismatches. I wonder when you noticed it sort of evolve into hunting matchups as opposed to finding a mismatch and what the differences are in today's NBA. Yeah, it feels like um, it, it wasn't this way when I first started coaching eight years ago. I think maybe um, maybe over the last five or six years, it's gotten more and more popular um, as as we've had more and more three point shooting, more you know five out lineups um, because the floor is so open, and then all the switching. You know, it's hard to attack switches, and um, and I think that's the reason for the the hunting uh, over the last few years. I'm glad it, they didn't have it like 25 years ago. That wouldn't have gone well for me. Dan, over here on the side. Hey, Steve. hey Dan. Um, you, you were able to play against Boston um, as a player in the playoffs, and this will be your first chance coaching against them in the finals. I'm curious, as a kid from the Palisades who grew up watching Showtime Lakers, what, what, how, how does this kind of sit with you personally, the, the chance to face the Celtics in the NBA Finals? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I grew up uh, watching Magic and Bird go at it in the 80s. Um, I was sitting literally in the last row of the forum when uh, Kevin McHale took out Kurt Rambis uh, and changed the series. I think that was uh, 84, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and some of my favorite memories as a player um, I was playing in Boston Garden. Um, you know, I, I remember starting a game early in my career. We had a couple guys injured, and, and you know, going out to half court and you know, bumping fists. You know, Larry Bird actually said, "You know, good luck, Steve." And I was like, "You too, Larry." And I was like, "It's what? What is happening right now?" It was surreal, and it was thrilling. You know, to be on the Garden floor and. Um, so there's there's a mystique uh, that that um, exists with the Celtics for sure. Um, incredible franchise, incredible history, um, and for me, just having grown up, you know, watching watching those games and um, and being you know being a fan, it's it's pretty cool to be coaching in the finals against them. Joe here in the second row. Hi, Steve. Hi, Joe. What, uh, how do you think you're going to list um, Peyton, Porter, and, and Andre? Uh, all three will be questionable. Uh, all three took part in our brief scrimmage today, and um, we'll see how they uh, turn up tomorrow. So, um, but it was a good sign that all three were able to, uh, to, to have contact today. Right here in the front. Uh, how have you seen some of your younger players kind of just handle heading into this circus that is the finals, the less experienced guys, and even guys like Andrew, who is a veteran but hasn't played at this stage before? Well, uh, today's really the first day that um, it feels like a circus. You know, the last couple of days have been business as usual, just um, normal practice times and film sessions and so we've uh, we've talked to the group about how different it feels. Uh, our veteran players uh, have addressed the group uh, about uh, you know the difference uh, in the finals compared to earlier playoff rounds, just in terms of the atmosphere and and the vibe. So um, all you can do is uh, you know try to prepare for it and and try to focus on on the game. But uh, there's there's a lot of Fanfare, for sure. And uh, so hopefully our young guys will adapt quickly. Steve, on your right. Steve, when, when you played in this, it was 2-3-2 two, two format. Since you've coached in it, it's the 2-2-1-1-1, two, two, one, 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 like the other rounds. What stands out for you thinking about those 2-3-2 two, two situations in terms of the changeover? And given that we're coast to coast now, uh, how do you weigh the extra air travel Compared to the home advantage situation, I like two two one 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 better. I think it's a it's a, um, a more fair format, um, and given that we have a couple of days in between every game other than uh, three and four, 
uh, I think you know we'll, both teams will be able to handle the, the travel. But it, it seems like a more fair test. Uh, uh, what I remember was you know any time a, a team lost one of the first two at home during that 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 era, um, it didn't seem right that you had to go on the road and and play three straight road games. Um, and I think that's why the, the format was changed back. Ironically, though, um, it hardly ever happened where the home team won the middle three. Um, so it was good for travel, but it, it feels like a more natural flow to, to go back to 2 2 one, one, one. Second row on the left. Hey, Steve, Bobby Manning. Um, <clears throat> so this team, Celtics team's had a lot of success against you guys over the last couple of years here, and it feels like Marcus Smart's been there constant. You hear the all the positive things people say around the league, heart and soul, the defense, defensive player of the year, stuff like that. Can you just kind of describe from a basketball sense just the impact he has on the game? Yeah, and I, I coached Marcus um, in the World Cup a few summers ago, so um, along with Jason and, and Jalen um, and Kemba at the time, we had four Celtics on that team. So um, I've gotten to know these guys a little bit. Uh, Jason last year uh, during the Olympics, um, so it's been fun to, to get to know them. And, and, uh, but uh, Marcus, uh, I, I described him yesterday as kind of the guard version of Draymond. You know, he's, um, he's just all over the place defensively, uh, really, really smart, um, anticipates plays, um, understands angles, um, you know, the versatility to guard um, one through five. Um, it's all there, so uh, there's a reason he won one defensive player of the year. He's a, he's a, a, a great great defender and, and a, probably an underrated offensive player as well. Melissa, second row. Hey, Steve. Uh, what do you remember from going to the finals for your first time back in 2015 compared to how you're feeling heading into it now? Um, <clears throat> I think... Um, you know, like like um, like anything else, um, you know, the first time you f you feel something, you know, uh, first time you do something, it's uh, there, there's a there's an unknown and a mystery about it, which makes it um, even more exciting in a lot of ways. Um, you know, first time that I went to the finals as a player, it was just, you know kind of the same feeling. Um, and then, you know, if you're lucky enough to do it again, you know, you feel like, all right, I know what to expect. Um, I, I, it's, it's a little different vibe, but it's still, you know, really exciting to, to be part of just knowing that, you know, this is the pinnacle. This is what we're all trying to accomplish. So to be back here again is, uh, is an amazing feeling. Last question towards the back. Steve, good to see you. Um, to Usually... I look at matchups between two teams. It's usually David and Goliath. Uh, but in this instance, it seems like it's two Davids going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, specifically how you got here. Um, when you look at this matchup against the Celtics defensively, uh, I feel like th they may just be something that's different against elite teams throughout the playoffs. What have you zeroed in on one, and do you, got, do you see the similarity between two Davids rather than David and Goliath? Um, that's my old job when I was at TNT. I had to think of storylines like that. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, dive into that, that kind of thing now. I just, uh, you know, I look at our opponent and I look at our team and I think, how can we, you know, try to beat this team? What I see in Boston is, uh, uh, great defensive team, super athletic, uh, a team that has continuity. You know, they've, uh, been in the playoffs year after year with the same core. Uh, so it's a, a team that uh, has, has worked its way to this point um, in a very uh, natural, organic way. You know, the, traditionally this is, this is how it's supposed to work in the NBA. If you look at, you know, over the years, you know, you, you grow a team through the draft, you take your lumps in the playoffs, you climb up, and then you, you know, you get to, to the finals. Um, and this, our team was built somewhat the same way, you know, a couple trips to the playoffs and, and uh, with some young guys and gain more and more experience and break through. So I think it's um, what, what I like is it's two teams that um, were mostly built with patience and through the draft, 
and uh, development, player development, and and continuity. And I think that's good for the sport. Um, so you know, hopefully everybody stays healthy or gets healthy, and we we have a you know hell of a series. Thanks, coach. Thanks.